Hello and welcome to this top down engine tutorial. I'm Rono from Our Mountains and today we're going to talk about keys, doors and chests in the engine. So thanks to the inventory engine which is included in the top down engine, the engine natively supports the creation, collection and use of keys. Uh, keys are inventory items that, as the name implies, are going to be used to open stuff, whether that be doors or chests or anything like that. And basically it's going to let you create logic in your game and progression and block the player and stuff like that. So it's extremely useful. It can be used for much more than just actual doors. Um, as you can see right now, I can't open that door. And that is because my inventory is basically empty, save for some bullets. But thankfully in this room where I killed this ninja guy before, uh, there's a key right below me. So if I pick it up along with some coins, you can see that I now am in possession of a wooden key. And if I use that key and try to open that door again, now it opens and now I can kill that guy, break stuff, get a sword, use that sword. It's all good stuff. So in this tutorial, what we are gonna try and do is create a new key. Um, this one is a wooden key. We're gonna create a tutorial key or something. And we're going to modify that door so that it now requires not a wooden key, but a tutorial key. And from there, you'll be able to create any sort of doors for your own game. So uh, I have a game folder here where I just created for this tutorial uh, two images, a key icon to be used in the inventory and the tutorial key to be used as the picker. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a folder called resources where I'm going to put my item. So um, this tutorial assumes you have some form of knowledge of the inventory engine. Otherwise, uh, if you don't, I suggest you go and look at its documentation. It explains how to, how, you know, inventory works and how to create items and how they are stored. But I won't go again over all the details. But uh, what you need to know is that you need a resources folder to put your items in. Otherwise, Unity won't be able to load them. So it has to be named exactly like that. Um, and then you right click, go create more mountains, top down engine, inventory engine key. And I'm gonna call that tutorial key. I'm actually gonna copy that name and paste it directly into my item ID field because I wanna make sure that um, my actual script level object and my item ID match. Uh, this is extremely important. I want that key to be usable. Uh, I can fill in the, the fluff text. So that would be tutorial key. Uh, this is just random text, so you don't have to make sure it matches anything. Is glowy a word? Glowy. All right. Um, So I can move this object, I can swap it. Uh, I have actually an icon for it, and that would be this thing. Um, I don't have a prefab for it yet, but I'm going to create one and come back to this. Uh, maximum stack of one. I could put sounds on it, but uh, I'm just going to use the default ones. And um, so I've created the item that is going to be stored, so that's the data structure that is going to be used, but I'm going to need a picker to actually be able to have my character put it into its inventory. So what I can do is simply copy one of the existing pickers, uh, could be the coin, could be the rifle and so on. Uh, they're pretty much all the same. So I duplicate it, put it here, um, and I'm going to unpack this prefab to separate it from the wooden key. And I'm going to rename it tutorial key picker. Um, so a key picker or any picker is made of a collider and that is the zone that will activate the pick of the item when a character walks on top of it. Uh, then we have a pickable item and the role of this component is mostly to trigger uh, well, the pick when colliding but also to trigger a feedback. So when we pick this item we have a sound, we have some sort of lens distortion applied an effect uh, we instantiate some particles and we also have a flash playing so that's all the feedback we give to the player to 
let them know, hey, this object got picked. Uh, then we have a model and we want to make sure that our model is now our new key, which is blue and shaped like a T for tutorial. This is very clever. So I now have a picker and I want my picker to not give me a wooden key, but I want it to give me a tutorial key. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this. Um, I think I'm ready to make a prefab out of this. So I'm gonna click here and drag it here. I now have a, a tutorial key picker prefab, which uh, lets me finish the process by selecting my scriptable object. And right here, I have a prefab drop field that is for now completely empty. If I drag and drop my key picker into it, um, every time I'm gonna drop that key from my inventory, it's gonna go back to the world as a key picker like that. The last thing I forgot to do is to select my key. And here I have my target inventory name. I want to make sure this matches whatever context I have. So if I go into my inventories here, you can see mine is actually called Koala main inventory, not just main inventory. So I'm gonna go here and paste Koala main inventory. I can now press play. I arrive in the world, I have no uh, nothing in my inventory. I can go down, grab my key, my feedback gets played. I get my key into my inventory and um, I can now also, you know, like drop it into the world. It gets dropped in the world. I can pick it again and I can try to open the door, but it doesn't work. And for good reason, because I didn't tell the door that it needed to use the new key. So uh, we're gonna ba go back into uh, detail on over uh, how the door works. But for now, the only thing I wanna do is change the key ID that this door requires to tutorial, tutorial key. So of course I want to make sure this matches the exact uh, name of the key I created. And if I press play again, you can see that if I try to open it with an empty inventory, nothing happens. But if I go grab my key, open the door, kill people, kill stuff, grab the coins, everything's good. So now that we know how to create a key and make it work, uh, we can have a look at that door because it's a good example of uh, an interaction zone. So uh, a, in this case, a key operated zone. So as you can see, this door is made of a bunch of components. Uh, the first one being the dungeon door. And if I press play, go back to my scene view, uh, you can see that in my inventory, uh, my inspector here, sorry, I have a toggle door button. And if I press it, it opens, closes the door. Uh, this in turn changes the door state right above me, I could, I think, also, yeah, uh, directly use that drop down to change it. Uh, and what this actually does, if you look at uh, the hierarchy here, as I press the button, it basically turns parts of the door on or off. So it either triggers, you know, the sprites and colliders for the open door or the closed door. And so the closed door basically has a huge collider that connects with the walls and prevents movement while the open doors uh, simply don't. And that's how you enable or close the door so that um, a mix of colliders and visual elements that communicate to the player the fact that the door is open or closed. I also have activation feedbacks and error feedbacks to be played when the door can or cannot open. And my door is also made of a collider, a box collider 2D, which is this uh, bigger one. And this one doesn't prevent passage from the player. What it does is it's a, a trigger. And when I enter that zone, I am able, uh, if conditions are met, to interact my, with my key operated zone here. And this script, uh, which basically extends the button activated class. Um, so the button activated class would be all the settings between here and here. And button activated class, as the name implies, lets you associate actions to the fact of pressing a button when entering a zone. It also uh, allows for triggering stuff, uh, triggering actions when not even 
pressing a button. So it's just uh, you enter a zone, you do something. Um, so that lets you, you know, create events in your game when the character goes after a certain level, a certain part of the level. Maybe you want to move a wall or activate a moving platform or you know have enemies spawn so that this class button activated would be how you do it and if you want to have that linked to the position of an item then you want a key operated zone which is the same but uh, it will also require that you have a key that matches the key id right here and um, from its inspector you'll be able to define a bunch of settings the first one will be the activation conditions so uh, you can define whether or not you want this door to require a button activation ability, uh, whether or not you want to require a player character uh, to prevent, for example, an AI from triggering a zone. You could decide whether or not it's auto-activated, in which case you wouldn't have to press a button. And in the case of a key-operated zone, that would just consume the key as soon as you enter the zone. Uh, if you're just on a button-activated zone, of course, not no, no key required, that would just trigger the zone, I guess. Um, you can decide whether or not you want the character to be necessarily grounded, uh, so no jumping character, no flying characters. You can define how many activations you want. You can have a button uh, visual prompt, so uh, that would be, in this case, uh, this A thing. And it is also animated and uh, you can customize the color of it. Uh, I'm not sure I can do it at runtime, I think not, but... Uh, um, yeah, actually, it works. Wow, who cool did that? Um, that is that is really cool, actually. I didn't know it worked like that. Um, I thought it was only initialization. That's interesting. Uh, never mind. So you have a, a fully customizable, even at runtime, visual prompt, and uh, where you can say uh, you can have some text. Also, you could say it's uh, it's now button B. And as you can see, I'm amazed by my own creation um, you can now have something that says hey press that blue B button and I guess uh, B would be red on most gamepads there we go um, and you can also associate some feedbacks so that would be the activation feedback and error feedback the error feedback would be uh, this tiny flashes in this case and they are all defined somewhere below now I think Changing the thing at runtime has some drawback. But anyway, uh, the last part, of course, defines whether or not this zone requires a key. And uh, here you specify what key ID you want and what action happens when the key gets consumed. In this case, uh, we target our wooden door, so ourselves, and this script in particular, the dungeon door, and it's going to call its toggle door method actively opening it or closing it. The last thing I wanted to show you in this video are chests. So you'll find them to work in a very similar way as the wooden door. Uh, we have an example of that in the Koala dungeon scene in the top right corner. And as you can see, a chest is made also of a key operated zone script. So that's basically the same thing. Uh, but this one targets a different thing. So while the door of course triggered uh, sorry targeted the action set on the dungeon door component this one looks for the dungeon chest component and the dungeon chest right here uh, is basically item pickers so just like the coins and stuff uh, these tell that you know in this case if I open that chest, I'm going to get 50 Koala rifle ammo and also 50 Koala coins. And this is just done via the inventory engine chest, uh, a very simple script that I'm going to open. And this script, what it does, I'm going to try to bring it to the screen. Uh, so this is a simple mono behavior. And what it does is when you call open chest, it triggers an animation and it picks the chest contents. And what that does is it looks for all the item pickers that are on it and it just calls its pick method. So 
it's like walking on top of a lot of these speakers all at once. And uh, this is done when the right key is inserted. In this case, it doesn't require a key, but uh, we could do something like that and go tutorial key. And if I press play, we're gonna go on an adventure, trying to get, actually, I think it's faster this way, like that. So I now have a tutorial key, 50 uh, ammo for the handgun and nine coins. But if I open the chest, you can see the chest opens. Uh, I can't interact with it anymore, but I now have 50 assault rifle ammo and I got 50 more coins. So, you know, I picked the contents of the chest. So that's pretty much it. Uh, as far as keys, doors and chests are concerned in the engine, I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.